Princess Mirabel and the Dragon Pox by Julia Donaldson and Lydia Monks. Ellen had chicken pox. She was covered in spots. You mustn't scratch them, said mom. Ellen put on her right slipper. She had lost the left one and went to look at her spots in the bathroom mirror. The spot on her nose was so itchy. Surely a tiny little scratch wouldn't do any harm. Ellen lifted a finger to her nose. Then she jumped when a voice from the mirror said, Don't scratch! You might turn into a toad. Could this really be happening? Could Ellen's reflection really be talking to her? Before Ellen could reply, the mirror girl went on. You've got really bad dragon pox. No, I haven't, said Ellen. I've got chicken pox, and so have you. You are my reflection. Don't be silly, said the mirror girl. And the next second, she had jumped out of the mirror and was in the bathroom with Ellen. I'm Princess Mirabel. You're really out to courtesy. But as you are my friend, I let you off. Are you really a princess? asked Ellen. But you look just like me. You've got the same pajamas. You've even lost one of your slippers, like me. Oh, no, I haven't, said Mirror Bill. She paused for a second and then continued. My slipper was stolen by a goblin. They're always stealing slippers. They like to sleep in them. Ellen laughed. Do they have little sheet and pillows? She asked. Never mind that, said Mirror Bell. We need to get started on the cure for dragon pox. And she put the plug in the bath and turned on the taps. But I haven't got dragon pox, said Ellen. Well, I have, Mirror Bell said firmly. You see, a dragon captured me last week and carried me off to his mountain lair. Luckily, a knight came and rescued me. But when I got home, I came out in these terrible spots. Did the knight want to marry you? Asked Helen. But Mirabel seemed not to hear her. Now then, said Mirabel, on with the cure. This stuff looks good. She grabbed a bottle of bubble bath and squirted it into the water. Then, how odd, she exclaimed as hundreds of bubbles appeared. Don't you have bubble bath back home? Asked Ellen. Certainly not, said Mirror Bell. But we do have bubble fish. They're much better. They swim about in the bath and blow thousands of bubbles. But it isn't the bath water a bit hot for the fish? Asked Ellen. Never mind that, said Mirror Bell. Let's get in. Hmm, we need some more ingredients, said Mirror Bell when they were both in the bath. Let's try this. Before Ellen could stop her, she had squirted a whole tube of toothpaste into the water. Hey, no, we won't be able to clean our teeth, Ellen protested. But can't you get the fairies to clean your teeth? Asked Mirror Bill. No, I don't know any fairies. And what would they use instead of toothpaste? Well, our fairies collect dewdrops from rose petals 
and use that, said Mirabel. How does it stick on the toothbrushes? asked Ellen. I do wish you wouldn't ask so many questions, said Mirabel. Let's get on with the cure. How about this? And she squirted in some white foam from a spray can. Stop! cried Ellen. That's my dad's shaving cream. Well, I think he should stop shaving like my father, the king, said Mirabel. Does your father have a beard then? asked Ellen. Of course he does. It's so long, it reaches the ground. He needs two servants to walk ahead of him to carry it. And sometimes birds make their nests in it. Ellen laughed. And do the birds fly in and out, feeding worms to their babies? She asked. Mirabel didn't reply. Instead, she poured a bottle of shampoo into the bath. How will we wash our hair now? asked Ellen. I wouldn't bother washing it, said Mirabel. When my hair gets dirty, I just say a magic spell and wish for some different hair. My hair doesn't always look like yours, you know. Last week, I had golden curls, and the week before, I had mm, red ringlets. I'd love to do that, said Ellen. What is the magic spell? I'll tell you later, said Mirabel, and she splashed some frothy, creamy, foamy, toothpaste bath water at Ellen. Ellen giggled and splashed some back. This was beginning to be fun. But then she noticed that the bathroom floor was getting really wet from all the splashing. Oh dear, my mom will be a bit cross, she said. Really? How peculiar. My mother, the queen, is cross if I don't splash the floor. In fact, she likes me to splash it so much that the whole bathroom is like a paddling pool. Then she paddles about in it to wash her feet, and so do all the palace maids. Doesn't the water drip down onto the floor below? asked Ellen. I thought I told you stop asking questions said Mirabel. Now it's time to get dry and put our pyjamas back on. But we are still all spotty, said Ellen as she put on her slipper. The cure hasn't worked. Oh, that's because we haven't done part two yet, said Mirabel. What's part two? asked Ellen. This. Mirabel picked up a roll of loo paper and started to wind it round and round Ellen, who laughed. What about you? she asked. We'll do me later, said Mirabel, carrying on winding. Before long, Ellen's whole body was covered in loo paper and Mirabel had started on her face. Then... Close your eyes and count two hundred, she said, so Ellen did. Ninety-eight, ninety-nine, hundred. Ellen ripped the paper off her face and opened her eyes. Where are you, Mirabel? she asked. She looked around the empty room and saw that the door handle was turning. But it wasn't Mirabel. Instead, Ellen's mom came into the room. Ellen, what have you been doing? She said as she looked at the watery, foamy room and all the empty tubes and bottles. It wasn't me. It was Princess Mirabel, said Ellen. 
She came out of the mirror. She was trying to cure my dragon pox. I mean, chicken pox. Oh, and I suppose she's gone back into the mirror now, said Ellen's mom. Ellen looked at the mirror over the basin. It was covered in toothpaste bubbles. Yes, I think she has, she said. Ellen's mom sighed. Then she looked at Ellen. Actually, your spots do look quite a bit better, she said. That one on your nose has disappeared. And look, she added, picking something out of the basin. Here's your left slipper. Ellen said nothing, but she smiled as she put the slipper on. She knew that it wasn't really her slipper. It belonged to Princess Mirabelle. The end.